Before I get started, I wanted to share some happy news. Uh, two of my friends that met at CrossFit just gave birth to a beautiful baby tire. And <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute. You know, it's you know, it's just default. You know, like 500 pounds, you know, three feet wide. You know, just looks like it's dad. You know, so just some news. Um, so uh, I grew up with Jehovah's Witness, and uh, in grade school, kids would be like, hey, Brian, you're a Jehovah's Witness. Isn't that a cult? Aren't you in a cult? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, that's not a cult. Come on, it's just a regular religion. And now that I'm out of the religion and looked up the definition of a cult, I was in a cult. <laughs> From zero to 16 years of age, full-fledged Jehovah's Witness. I was born into it. Popped out of my mom with the suit on, ready to go door to door. Impressive, I know. And, oh, I loved going door to door. It was my favorite. I grew up in the suburbs, so I get to go house to house, just having fun. I, I loved it because I can knock on your door and then hear you hide on the other side. Your wooden floors, I can hear you, okay? My favorite time was I knocked on a door and two seconds later, the garage door opens and a 1995 Chevy Corsica zooms out of the driveway like it was back to the future. It's like, where are we going? We don't need Jehovah's Witnesses. Where they just like, honey, the Jehovah's Witnesses are here. But I told him, we're not, I'm not, we don't want them. But they're back. Honey, grip the kids. Grab the kids. We're out of here. We're not coming back. So we just had a new house to do Bible study. So it's fine with me. It's fine with me. Uh, my parents, like, right off the bat told me, you know, that there's no Santa, no Easter Bunny, no Tooth Fairy, none of it. So I was major buzzkill in school. You know? <laughs> it's like, oh, you got that toy from Santa, huh? Uh, well, he's not real and he's a pagan god. Hi, I'm Brian. Do you want to trade cheese? <laughs> That's how I did it. I remember I, I told my first girlfriend that I've never had a Christmas tree or a birthday, and she just started crying. She's still like, oh my god, are you okay? And I was like, no. <laughs> I think I need sex to fix it. <laughs> and it worked. All right? When you tell a girl you've never had a Christmas tree or a birthday, Pity Sex Marathon on Food Network, dig in. But, uh, yeah, we, we were the model family of Jehovah's Witnesses. We were. Like, we were the Obamas of Jehovah's Witnesses. Like, we were the beacon of hope. That's what we were. That's how we were. And my dad was higher up in the, in the Jehovah religion. He was an elder. It's, it's a fancy nickname for regional manager, pretty much. Uh, and like everyone loved him. He, he gave great sermons and he gave great guidance and everyone wanted, everyone wanted to you know, look up to him. I looked up to him. So when I was 14, I got baptized, meaning I was gonna devote my life to Jehovah forever. Who's giving this 14-year-old just this idea? Not fair. But you can make life decisions like that at 14. I, I shouldn't have done that because my role model of that time was the Blue Power Ranger. I, you gotta pay some bills first so you're making life changing decisions, you know? But I got baptized and ooh, the, the Mitchells in the 90s were just humming. We were just, we were just the best. It's like, think of like a montage of Scarface but without the cocaine and the women. But, okay, it wasn't, it wasn't Scarface. It was just like a family having a good time. You know? And we're, we're just coasting through. Then everything changes. Uh, a woman moves into our town. She was disfellowshipped from the Jehovah's Witness, meaning that she did something bad and she was excommunicated, she couldn't come back. But she wanted to come back. And as a young baptized boy, I was like, I can get her back. Like, I can make her, I can make her faster, stronger. I can do this. So my mom and I studied with her for a couple months, and she is allowed back into the church. Two years later, my dad divorces my mom for that girl that we studied with. Have you ever inadvertently like taught your stepmom to be your stepmom? Because I did. I did. It's like my dad put in his two weeks for the family, and I have to make sure she knows how to mail merge. And I just turned 
We didn't know what to do. It was the 90s. It was a small town. We didn't have Google. You can't type in a search bar, hey, uh, how do you repair a family? <laughs> that doesn't happen. So I was broken. There was nothing I could do. So I started rebelling. So in, in the Jehovah religion, you need a chaperone to go on every date so no hanky-panky happens. But now that I was a rebellious boy, people would want me to be the chaperone because I would allow a little hanky-panky to happen. Because my motto was, if you buy me a steak, I'll let you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give a shit. So, all right. That was a good steak. All right. 15 minutes, all right? Just missionary. All right. All right. My name is Brian Mitchell. Thank you very much. <laughs>